did my favorites a couple years ago, and I took away too long, and so I apologize two years later. Uh, I was, like, embar I've been embarrassed since then. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make up for it. Um, is there something on you? Apparently, I just have to stay close. Okay. Um, great, thank you. No. So I, just, I want to share with you guys uh, an experience that I had about a year and a half ago while I was on sabbatical. Um, how that helped shift the way that I view the work that we do at Math Delicious, um, but also how I've, I've come to view math class and some of the opportunities I think that math class really represents. Um, as many of you know, in the eastern Aegean Sea, there is a, an island called Lesbos, um, and you may remember this from a number of years ago. This is where many of the refugees who were fleeing the Middle East would come on their way to on their way to Europe, um, and many of them were, were fleeing the civil war in Syria, um, but many others were also coming from places like Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan. They were economic migrants who were trying to get to Germany, Sweden for better job prospects. Uh, but wherever they were coming from, um, they would go to Turkey, uh, and then from Turkey they would pay smugglers and take a raft to Lesbos, and they would land on the northern beaches of Lesbos. And here the groups uh, diverged. So the Syrians, because they had priority war status, or war refugee status, uh, they went to a camp called Karatepe, uh, and there they were given food, they were given clothing, but most importantly they were given expedited processing into the European Union. Um, the non-Syrians were taken to another camp um, at Moria, and this is where I was volunteering. Um, so unlike Karatepe, Moria was a dump. Um, it was actually a, a former maximum se security prison. Uh, the folks were there for about a week waiting for their processing papers, um, and while they were there, there was no real shelter other than a couple tents. There was no real food service, um, and perhaps worst of all, uh, at least for the census anyway, there, there, was, there were two latrines for a couple thousand people. Um, and so the place was dirty, it smelled of human waste, it was, it was effectively subhuman. Um, but of course the people there were profoundly human, I mean they weren't really any different from any of us. Uh, again, most of them were men who were looking for better job prospects, but there were families as well, there were kids, uh, again, folks just like us. And so I was there for about a month, and every day I would show up at the camp and I would, I would ask myself, what should be done about this camp? Um, now typically that would be a really easy question to answer. Um, someone needs to come in here and the EU needs to come invest and make, you know, pave it and, and build bathrooms and install food service. Or, but in this case, I, I, find my, I found myself not really sure what I thought should happen, and here's why. Uh, because this guy didn't speak English, and he didn't speak German, and he was coming from Pakistan, and if he couldn't get a job in Lahore, then what were his job prospects in Berlin? From a humanitarian perspective, it seemed really obvious to come make this camp better, but from the perspective of, for instance, the German parliament, the better the camp was, the more economic migrants they would invite, the more they would end up spending on social services for people who end up in Germany, and, there are, and they'd be stretching an already pretty strained social safety net. And so, in, in resolving or in asking this question, what should be done about this camp, I came back to what Grace reminded us of yesterday, which is, it's complicated. And so what does this have to do with math, and what does this have to do with math class? Well, when you consider where we are as a country, we seem to have an increasingly difficult time talking to one another about issues that affect us in society. And I think there are a number of reasons for this. One is because we're surrounded by things like Twitter and Facebook, hyper-partisan media that just consistently affirms to us that we're right. We kind of exist with this perpetual certainty. I think that's one part of it. And then there's another part, which is I think we just we don't do a very good job analyzing a lot of the issues from healthcare to minimum wage, whatever. Now, what does that do with math class? Well, there is no better tool, I think, for logical analysis than mathematics. But let's consider the types of experiences that we typically prioritize in math class. Oftentimes when we define open-ended, 
what we really mean is multiple ways of getting to the same answer. Right? There are a bunch of different ways to get to 3 or 5 pi over 7 or whatever. That's how we've defined open-ended. And the reason for me that this was, this experience was my favorite was because I found that this situation didn't have an answer. It wasn't that it had a hard answer, it, that it didn't have an answer. And I found, and the reason I share this with you is because I found that my reaction wasn't to react. And it was one of the first times in my life where I, I just, this, I didn't react, and I found that, that uncertainty cathartic. Um, and so in the middle of this refugee camp in Greece, surrounded by all of these people trying to move to a different life, I found myself totally ambivalent. And I found myself really kind of romanticizing over this notion of math class where we prioritize tasks and problems not just when the answers are difficult, but when the answers actually don't exist. Um, and so I offer that experience, um, and I hope I was under five minutes. Thanks. Thank you.